TikTok and its effect on the music industry. In case you weren't aware, <laughs> at this point, how couldn't you be aware? But in case you weren't aware, TikTok has been a thing for a while now. Its popularity has grown astronomically over the past like two years, and I'll be real, it's cool. There's a lot of good stuff on there that's super interesting and sometimes funny. However, this is a music based channel. We talk about music. On this video, I wanted to chat to you about TikTok and its effects on the music industry. I go by this. Let's get weird. You know what's funny? At the start, like many others, I honestly thought TikTok was just another trend that was going to crash and burn over the coming months, fall off and become the next Pokemon Go or something. However, with COVID taking hold of the world in its bat-shaped clutches, we all found ourselves bored in the house, in the house bored, with nothing better to do. Most of us anyways. A lot of us found ourselves taking up new hobbies, spending time in periods of introspection to really find ourselves and where we belong in this whole simulation we live in. Another noticeable change is that we found ourselves spending so much more time than usual on our phones than ever before. With that came the rise of popular video sharing app, TikTok. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll give those of you who are not too tech savvy a quick summary. TikTok is a social media app that allows users to share videos up to a minute long, or at this point it's up to three minutes long. You have the ability to go live and stuff. A big thing with TikTok is that you can use music in your videos. You often see people badly lip syncing or dancing to these tracks over the course of about 15 seconds and getting hundreds of thousands, even millions of likes for it. Why? <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> Naturally, this makes TikTok the perfect place if you're a starving artist to get some spins on Spotify and stuff. I've seen it happen plenty of times as well. You have as well. Look at that stupid Astronaut in the Ocean song that has, hold on, let me check, let me check, let me check. Half a billion streams. It has half a billion streams at the time of recording this. This generation is so draining. I hate it so much, man. That's not me saying I was born in the wrong generation. But I was born at the right time, because if I was born in like the 60s or something, I'd have been dead by now. I'm 20, I'd have been dead. I'd, I'd be on a tree rotting. I'm digressing. All I'm saying is, the point is, how can a song with lyrics that, like, that 50% of the time don't even make sense, skyrocket in popularity to the point where it's being used in 15.8 million videos on TikTok and obtaining 5.7 billion views so far off of those videos? Why? How? Huh? It doesn't make sense. Bella Porch. She released a track the other day? Week? I don't know, man. All I do know is that she's a pretty popular TikTok person, millions of followers. I'm pretty sure the most liked video of TikTok. Why is it the most liked video on TikTok? I don't know. Don't ask me questions like that. I don't, I don't have the answers. Here's the thing. Bella Porch, a young lady who's only released one song, somehow has 50 million listens on her track. Probably upwards of that by now, because I, I wrote this episode like weeks ago. The thing is, if anyone was to blow up like that overnight, we'd simply call them an industry plant and go about our day. Bella has 16 million monthly listeners right now. That's more monthly listeners than Brockhampton, Thundercat, and Odd Future combined. Why is that? She has more monthly listeners than Nicki Minaj, bro. Nah, I'm joking. She doesn't actually. I'm joking. <laughs> it would be pretty crazy if she did. I'd say there's definitely a sense of illegitimacy in the art when artists use their already high follower numbers and send them to go jack up the street on their tracks. I have so many examples that come to mind right now. In fact, there's a certain rapper on YouTube who had all of these crazy A-list features on a number of his tracks. I for one feel that there's no way this would have been the case if he wasn't a YouTuber, if he wasn't already a super famous person. Like his bars and flow and vocals aren't even that good a lot of the time. It's a whole conundrum. His numbers would be a whole lot lower if he was just putting out this music with no prior YouTube career. Well, it's there. That's super obvious. Yeah, well, your dog's inbred, so... Ariana Grande, she had a song drop a few, she had an album even drop a few months ago. It might have been last year, I, and just about every single one of those songs became a TikTok song in some way, shape or form. Megan The Stallion, bruh. 
she had a whole trend where girls would shake their back for the entire 15 seconds of the whole video. I think something we need to question in this case in particular is why on earth was there a whole 15 seconds where Megan was just rapping body yaddy 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 and hands on my knees shaking. I've got respect for Megan as well. The knees have started the whole wave and I'm not complaining, okay? She's a super talented rapper as well, which also uh, helps out a bit. But what was that? I think in this case, because she's had a few bangers under her belt with WAP and a few others, I don't really listen to her that much. She felt like she might have been able to get away with this. Not on my watch, bro. Not on my watch. On the other hand, another reason that we may need to consider is the fact that she simply wanted this song to go viral on TikTok. She wanted those plays. Rent was due, okay? She wanted us to cut her some slack. Because the thing is, those 15 seconds had so much potential to be turned into a trend or dance or something. And I mean, even the music video was seen to possibly influence this taking place. Because, I don't know about you guys, but Megan is starting to seem like a bit of a one-trick pony. No pun intended. <laughs> With her style in the way she plays out the whole strong female Jezebel sex symbol character. Like, yeah, your hooks are catchy. But where is the lyricism? Like, repeating the line, hands on my knees shaking, you know. It's not exactly the pinnacle of lyricism. And we know that she can do better. Something I've noticed over the course of my time on TikTok is the amount of old tracks that seem to have been given a new wave of appreciation. Whether this is due to nostalgia from the early Gen Zs or the late Millennials, or simply the later Gen Zs discovering these tracks for the first time, or a mix of both, I'm not the person to ask. But I do know that it definitely increases the discrepancies in the listens on music platforms. See now part of me feels an element of negativity because I know, and I'm sure a lot of you know, that Kid Cudi has a lot of tracks that are better than Day and Night. A lot of tracks that are better than The Scots. Miguel has a lot of tracks that are better than Sure Thing. It's a good song, Sure Thing's one of my favourite songs by him, but he's got better songs though. And I'm sure a lot of you will agree. I could name examples all day and night. But I'm sure you get the idea. These artists who are getting a second wave of appreciation for their work or at least getting some appreciation from a different demographic than, than what they were originally intended for. But at the same time, does this affect the growth of their music as a whole or is it harmful to repeat the same trends over and over as time goes on? And trends do repeat themselves. History repeats itself in terms of trends. We're currently going through a resurgence in early 2000s slash 90s clothing. I think maybe last year people were wearing a lot more vintage stuff than before. So, you know, whether this is a harmful thing or an appreciative thing of the past, I don't know. But perhaps musically it may be slightly harmful to repeat the same trends over and over again. We'll see though, we'll see what happens. Capitalism as an influence. If we're looking at the quality of music coming from these A-list artists that the radio stations know and love, Justin Bieber and Drake. What was yummy? What was yummy? What was that right foot up, left foot stomp thing? What was that? Imagine getting to that high of an A-list artist that you can just start putting out that kind of stuff. Like, go listen to the tracks, and then go listen to some of Drake's early stuff or whatever. Go listen to, I don't know, journals by Justin. I don't really listen to Justin Bieber that much. But listen, imagine getting to that high, past the A-listers, into like the Greek letters, like Alpha list or something like that, you know? That you don't even need to worry about writing a proper hook to your song. You can just sing, go, you got that yummy, 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 yum, over and over again. That's past A-list, okay? That's past A-list. That's, that's Illuminati level. That's what that is. That's Illuminati level. That's past A-list and that's Illuminati level. It's insane. See, now the thing about these two tracks is that these two artists have been putting out music for years and years now. Just about pretty much over 10 years for both of them. They've been putting out music since before I even knew what the term good music even meant. You, the viewer, know that they can make good music. I know that they can make good music. But capitalism got the best of them and here we are listening to whatever that was. I can't really put the blame on them either because 
I can't say I wouldn't have done the same thing. All I'm saying is, everyone's got their price. Even still, I do want to dissect it a little bit because I think it would be good just to call it what it is. Rich people exploiting the social media system for their own personal gain. Let me tell you why it's bad. The artists with talents, messages to share, high potential to make it far in the industry, are being silenced by vocal elites in this sector. You know the crazy thing about this is I've literally talked about this on the podcast before. The Billy Womo interview episode, you guys should check that one out, that's a really good episode by the way. But yeah, we were literally talking about how you can really feel when an artist has put their heart, mind and soul into their music. In the cases of the former examples, nah. Anyway, closing off on this video, I just wanted to talk about my experience on TikTok, its effects on the music industry. I mean, I know there's like 500 videos on this already, but I just wanted to chat about it myself to you guys. Anyways, make sure to leave a like, comment, do what you want. I'm not too fussed, to be honest. This is like a little hobby. Yeah, I appreciate you watching. Stay lit. I go by Ish. Thank you for watching. See you next time.